My name is Stephanie Kern, and this is a picture of my son, Nicholas Schiavone. Nicky was a Lance Corporal in the Marines, and he was killed by an IED in Karma, Iraq, on November 15, 2005. As the war in Iraq rages on with no end in sight, members of military families speak out. Rhode Island Declaration of Peace and their supporters held a vigil and picketed outside Congressman Patrick Kennedy's offices in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Kennedy, a Democrat who voted for the War Powers Act of 2002 and until recently has been a supporter of the war, was not in his office or available for comment. Outside Kennedy's office, Spokesperson Jackie Amaro discussed the purpose of the vigil and what they hoped to accomplish. While inside, a delegation from the group asked to meet with the congressman. Congressman Kennedy was actually supposed to meet with us at the end of January um, in D.C. and for whatever reason he wasn't able to make it. So we requested another meeting, but they wanted to offer us a meeting um, the week of uh, uh, the third week of March, March 19th. And our concern is that that's probably that's simply going to be too late. Uh, the appropriations bill, if it passes the, the House, will be out of the House by then. Um, and so we've, we've come here today to, um, to give him some materials um, and to do a short presentation inside and uh, have a vigil outside to demonstrate um, our conviction um, that defunding is the best option um, and to also to raise public awareness that defunding is not abandoning our troops. In fact, that is what supports our troops. You know, If the goal is to end the war, um, then Congress will need to exercise the power of the purse in order to be able to do that, and they can do that by defeating the Supplemental Appropriations Bill. This is my son, and I'm from a military family. But these are your countrymen and countrywomen. These are your soldiers. And, and is this where you want them to be? Is this what you want them to be doing? You have a government that can't explain where billions of dollars went. Paul Bremer sat in front of Congress and shrugged his shoulders and said, well, it, there was chaos there. I don't have any receipts. I can't tell you where the money went. And now they want more. So in fact, they want Nicholas's children to pay for, my grandchildren, to pay for the war that killed their father. So please consider writing to your congressmen and women. Please call them and, and give, help, them, help them to have the courage to stop funding the war. Take a realistic look at what's happening. The soldiers aren't getting the money. Um, George Bush is cutting funding for veterans right now. He doesn't intend to spend the money on the soldiers. And it's rather disgusting that that's the argument that they're using. So we're asking the congressmen and women to please defund the war, to stop funding the war. It's, it's very frustrating to see our congressmen, um, like Patrick Kennedy, like Jim Langevin, um, say that the military strategy is not working. And they say this over and over again. Um, but then they won't, they don't actually back that up with action. They e equivocate when, when we approach them and say, what are you going to do uh, to end this war? We're military families and we would never advocate anything that would harm our troops. Uh, there is plenty of money in the pipeline to bring them home and Congress can exercise their con the constitutional power that is given to them um, to influence foreign policy and that's through appropriations. If they deny the supplemental appropriations, then in effect they are saying to the president um, that continuing this war is not in the interests of our nation. We're here as representatives of a group called Declaration of Peace and military families speak out. Okay, let me get Robin for you. How are you? Oh, good. Thank I'm you. Alyssa Weishart. Hi there. Nice to meet you. My name is Priscilla Reed. Nice to meet you. I'm Robin Costello. And Bruce Carlston. How are Hi, you? Bruce. Meet you. Robin, the three of us have come 
representing two groups, uh, Declaration of Peace and mm -hmm. Military Family Speak Out, plus I think uh, tens of thousands of Rhode Islanders, we are urgently concerned to meet with Congressman Kennedy, even for just a few minutes, mm -hmm. if he can find us the time. The issues are pressing. Our major focus here is to urge him to work to defund the war in Iraq. The Congress's primary power uh, is the power of the purse. Um, it's excellent that he has already contributed to the vote uh, not to support this escalation, mm -hmm. but without a vote to cut the funds available to this war and then proceed to bring these troops home, we're going to have Americans continuing to die and tens of thousands of Iraqi continue to die. In that bill, it doesn't address the 130,000 that are still there. So the point is that stop messing around with these little bills because it is not addressing the situation. Namely, let us close this down. What we're really calling upon him to do, urging him to do, is to assume a leadership role in making public statements that he is in favor of defunding this war. He needs to, to line up with people, show some muscle here, and make it clear that the Congress is going to assert itself. It has utterly failed to do so for several years now, and we're in quite a pass in Iraq. So what we're really asking him to do is make a statement of principle. Um, we understand that he can't say, I will vote for or against a given text at the moment, but he can make a statement of principle, and that's what we're calling upon him to do. Many of them couldn't help but turn their heads in the crowd and look for their wives and children, parents and friends. Then they stopped, turned and faced the commander, who began reciting words that disappeared before registering any meaningful message. When he dismissed them, a different thunder and commotion ensued as long-awaited reunions rushed to begin. I got down off the chair and scanned the building, then turned to find Michael right next to me. A small band played music, but for what but for that one minute, all the outer sounds seemed compressed into a different dimension. All I heard was the patting of our hands on each other's shoulders as we shared a great big hug. Then standing apart at arm's distance, I looked into his eyes and saw a strong and healthy young man, a soldier smiling like a teenager who had just graduated from high school. Later in the evening, we went out for dinner. The restaurant was nearly vacant. He ordered a Corona and grilled salmon. In the quiet fitting, and cold and dark shade of an Alaskan winter night, our voices were low, and the conversation wandered without purpose. How do you talk to a soldier who's been overseas in a war that you believe shouldn't have happened and should have already closed the book of failure on itself? I listened to a few short stories of firefights in the night and, and improvised explosive devices. He patiently listened, listened to a few of mine. I can't fathom what you've been through, I began telling him as we got ready to leave, but I believe that every soldier would prefer, prefer that there were no wars to fight. We all hate it, Michael replied. I was reminded of a quote by President Dwight e. Eisenhower, D. Eisenhower, the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Europe during World War II. I hate war as only a soldier who has lived it can, only as one who has seen its brutality, its futility, its stupidity. Michael isn't a general and isn't running for president, but his simply, but his simply declared truth comes with experience that commands respect. I imagined him as a student in Eisenhower's class, then in a class with our former president that our current one will never attain. I'm thrilled that Michael's home. They all deserve to come home. His battles are over, but our pursuit for peace isn't. Rich Moniak. <laughs>